I'm, first of all, I'm giving this talk on behalf of Adrian Williams, who is, has just retired. So he was obviously the LCA expert at Cranfield, so I'm giving it on his behalf. Next. So I'm gonna briefly go through three things, one of which is the comparison of attributional and consequential LCA approaches uh, we did. There was then a findings of a, a critical review so far and published, which I, I'll go through, comparing the two techniques on papers, or rather studies of the, using the two techniques. And then finally, some recommendations or thoughts for future use of LCA if this or these techniques are going to be scaled up and compared. So next. So this plot um, shows how um, simplistically for three types of system, how an attributional LCA is, is worked. Traditional LCA at the, within the factory as it were, or within the system is shown by the inner box. The bigger one then includes the what, what the consequences are of that system. And so the top one here, the most linear is for targeted systems, just for CO2 removal. Then you've got industrial systems that have other products, which include, and then include CO2 removal. And then finally, you've got land-based ones where the, the, the yellow CO2 removal is a much more complicated, as we've heard, but also you have products and, um, potentially ways of removing CO2. If you switch to the next one, which is very little different, it'll show the, uh, the consequential LCA approach. If we move on. Next slide. Yeah. And basically the consequential not only looks at the downstream products, but is also considering what the consequences are in the broader system which means that alternative production process can be for, taken into play. The inside of it between the three systems can be different. And so it's a, the least linear of the three. And the, of these, the land-based systems remains, remains the least linear for these. So basically, in terms of doing what we really want for the world, this gets a lot more complicated, is, is the bottom line, because it's included consequences both intended and unintended uh, in time anyway. So if we go to the next one, the issues to consider from this are what the system boundary is. Um, that includes what data is available to actually do the LCA, the input data, and what the choice of definition depends critically on the specific question uh, and the objective of the study. Like a lot of science, it's, it's the stakeholder normally has the question and objective, and it's critical to be designing the study to meet that, that need. And, and that point, again, is made below. It's limited to quantifiable properties. We everywhere, and we've heard in some of the talks, how do we merge the quantifiable and the unquantifiable aspects, both real to the environmental issues we face and it's ensuring comparability across systems. For example, if we're using me, looking at methane and CO2, we need to make sure we're comparing properly. Are we using GWPs, GWP stars? Or from the last talk, should we be thinking of temperature, sea level rise? What are the metrics we actually want to compare with when we're doing a full LCA analysis? These choices will be subjective unless international standards or procedures are followed. So these standards and procedures have to be broadly agreed. That will then give confidence to stakeholders and the society more generally. So to look at some of these issues, the critical review was carried out, looking at the, the studies that, as of a, a year or so ago, which have been applied to GGRTs, and I think more have come out since then. But if we go to the next slide, then the, the main findings of that review are, are as follows. Most of the review's studies were clearly stated as to what they were trying to do, and they're focusing on the value and the environmental impacts associated with the cost of a particular technology. 
The studies featured a variety of functional units, mostly related to the product of the system studied, electricity or whatever, the land occupation, the greenhouse gas sequestered, or, or um, further afield, it could be thought of, you could look at other pollutions resulting from the sequestration or either as a co-benefit or a cost. You then have the system boundaries were very homogeneous, heterogeneous, unlike what I was showing in the last two slides, and were mostly cradled to gate approaches, so somewhat limited in, their broad, in the breadth that they were applying in terms of what we really want. And the allocation studies, which is uh, where co-drivers and co-products are available, basically, were rarely described as to how you ascribe the, the CO2 saved to the different co-drivers or how you also include co-benefits. And so these studies had ALCA and CLCA or benef elements of both. So it's, it's quite mixed what's being done or was being done in the academic literature. So moving forward to the next slide, then we had some recommendations. And in a way, it's to make it more like accounting, if you like, I'm going to say, which is improve the comparability, traceability, and consistency of current LCA um, studies for GGRT. That means following the existing ISO norms on presenting these studies, which was not always done in, in the literature, have greater clarity on both inventories used to do the calculations, but also the availability of that data so other people can check it because it is often commercially limited. There needs to be a protocol on that. And then to develop more of a consensus approach on boundaries, impact measures, and uncertainty uh, uh, analysis. So these between them are more leading to a harmonization of LCA approaches to make them more comparable for the stakeholders I've already mentioned. So environmental impact categories is, are important to consider when you're trying to quantify the trade-offs and also to provide better policy support. And an example of that would be uh, the push to diesel fuel to, for CO2 reasons when little account was taken of the increase in particles and so the air, air pollution um, problems resulting at the time. So it's important to be considering those as one goes along. And then probably the most, well, this is from me saying it, but the most speculative is there are now life cycle costing approaches established, i.e. to me, the economics of the system. Social LCA approaches are being developed and, and are certainly are developing. Can they be used in conjunction with environmental LCA to really sort of do a more holistic picture of the two? Um, or should they be used in combination with those to provide balanced ones? And that's really a question, for, I think, in the policy stakeholder world. And so with that, I think I'll finish. <laughs>